From blast packs to boom bots, Raze is one of the flashiest characters in Valorant. Pro play and content creators alike have taken quite the interest in the character, as she's extremely strong on a variety of maps, and her utility offers her a ton of damage. Versatility and Speed, the name of the game if you're picking Raze. In today's video, we're going to dissect just what makes Rays so incredibly strong. And by the end of this video, you're going to learn everything you need to know about the character to lock her all the way to Radiant. We'll also have some words of advice and secret tips from a Radiant Rays one trick to share with everyone. Rays has some pretty insane utility. Her showstopper allows for easy multi-kills or a simple one-for-one -one trade. Her paint shells are an amazing stall and area denial utility. They can also land you a pretty free kill. The Boombot is a piece of tracking utility that will explode on impact and help you decide where to use your utility. And the Blast Packs, also commonly known as satchels, tie everything together. So let's talk about those first. Now keep in mind, if you're looking to climb, by far the most important thing for you to master with any agent is the fundamentals. This goes far beyond things like crosshair placement and counter strafing too, because everyone talks about that. It also includes things you probably don't even realize that you're doing wrong, like peeking, spacing with teammates, or even just where you choose to stand. That's a pretty crazy thought, right? You're standing in the wrong place right now. The players who are consistently able to drop 30 in their matches are masters of all of those things. They know where to stand. And you could be too now with our Aim God Masterclass that's expertly designed to teach you all of the fundamentals that you need to know in just one course. Our goal is to have this course teach you everything you need to know, which is exactly why we are constantly updating it as users submit feedback. The game is always developing, and that's why our website is too. It only makes sense that way. With new courses posted every single month, you can be sure that you're always ahead of the curve when it comes to your mechanics. And on top of that, we also offer a rank improvement guarantee, so if you don't climb while using our service, you just don't pay. And that's the way it makes sense to us, and that's the way it makes sense to all of our happy, paying customers, people like you. We know it all sounds insane, but our number one priority is to be a standing name in the community for years to come. And the only way to do that is to create the best product that we can. Check it out using the link below. Now, we've all seen the clips of Blast Packs. It's been one of the most popular pieces of utility since beta. Raise mains and warming up with satchels. Name a more iconic duo for me, I dare you. Blast packs are a piece of utility that must be armed before they deal damage, but you can still use them for their primary function of movement and repositioning before arming them fully. It takes one and a half seconds to arm them, and they'll last about five seconds before it explodes on a surface. It can do anywhere from 20 to 50 damage depending on the range it is from the enemy players, and it also pushes players, including yourself, away in a straight path. The speed you are pushed directly correlates to the distance and position you are at relative to the blast pack. We're going to talk mainly about how to use these to gain space on the enemy team, take peaks utilizing the blast pack, and how to properly use them to play Raze as a character. But we'll give you a basic rundown on satchel movement before we talk about the nitty gritty aspects of them. If you want a more in-depth guide for movement, we also have a whole video dedicated to learning Raze's movement linked below. When you position yourself directly on top of the blast pack, you'll go straight up in the air. And this can be good to get to elevated positions such as a heaven here on Haven. Let's talk about covering massive amounts of ground with Raze though, which is easily one of her strongest mechanics to master. If you're not used to how blast packs function as a movement tool, it's best to head into the practice range and do this. We'll show you the basics real quick so you can better understand it. To move quickly using the satchels, you want to throw it onto the ground and sprint at it, preferably with your knife out to get optimal speed. Jump over the blast pack when you're about two to three meters away, and when you're about halfway descended from your jump, detonate it. 
For the second satchel, if you're trying to go even further, a good rule of thumb is to be staring straight down and to detonate the second satchel when you start to decelerate. This will propel you at rapid speeds through the map. Now, once we have speed, let's throw in air strafing to control where we go. Air strafing broken down is simply just being able to control your movement in air. So, to move left in the air, you're going to want to let go of your W key and hold your A key while turning left. On the flip side, to move right, let go of your W key, hold the D key, and turn towards your right. Mastering air strafing is pretty crucial for Rays, but it's extremely simple. If you practice it a little bit, then apply it in-game, you're going to master it in no time. Using a judge can also be pretty scary for the enemy team to deal with, as you'll be in their face in the blink of an eye. So, keep in mind the weapon that you're using as you perform this push. Using blast packs to cover ground into the enemy lines can be extremely hard for the enemy players to deal with, especially if you have teammates assisting you with utility. Having teammates covering your double satchel push is pretty necessary to ensure you get onto the enemies in a safe fashion. What this can look like is as simple as a sky flash into the area that you're about to push. Any kind of flash will help take eyes away from you as you're soaring through the sky towards the enemy team. The reason Double Satchel is so strong is due to the fact you're moving at an extremely fast rate into where the enemy is holding. It's a great tool for entering for your team or helping them get onto site. Double Satcheling can also help free up space if your team is stuck at a choke and is unable to get out. Going straight into a smoke or a closed off area like U-Haul are going to be your best bet when satcheling in as it gives you some cover to play around once you arrive at your desired destination. Now let's talk about some small but essential tips you should remember when using your blast packs. People tend to think that they're only for satcheling quickly into the opponents, but they can also be used for a whole lot more. Firstly, they can be used as fast area denial. Let's say you take a fight with somebody where you both tag each other and they end up unpeaking you. If you don't want them to re-peak while you reposition, you can throw a satchel into where they're hiding. This will deter them not only due to the fact that the blast pack will damage them if they try and peek, but if they decide to peek early, you can detonate it as they peek to throw off their accuracy. Throwing off accuracy through the use of blast packs can net you some fairly free kills if you do it correctly. If you know there's an enemy in a certain position, you can attempt to toss one at their feet and detonate it while swinging. If you land it properly, their accuracy will be all over the place. And since satchels push people, they can also be used to push an opponent off the spike. So, satchels are a lot more versatile than people tend to think. And lastly, let's talk a bit more in depth about satchel peeking since we touched on it earlier. Satchel peeking is one of the best ways to peek an enemy in Valorant. The speed you get while performing this peek will be hard for players at any level to fight. Now, to perform this, stick a satchel to the wall just under waist height and move in the direction you want to swing. Detonate the blast pack while moving. This is going to launch you into the enemy screen. Once you stop moving, you'll be fully accurate. Think of this simply as an accelerated wide swing. You also need to note that the enemy, if close enough, will hear you set up for the peak so they could be ready for it. Usually this peak is stronger the closer you are to the opponent. The reason being, if you're super far away, the enemy doesn't have to adjust as much. So. This peak can be quite situational, but it is still strong when it's used correctly. The Boombot is a pretty simple piece of utility. The little guy is an equipable piece of utility that, when thrown, will travel for 5 seconds before expiring, bouncing off any wall it hits and redirecting itself, similar to a Roomba. The Boombot has a frontal vision cone, and any enemy player that goes into its path will be locked onto and chased. The enemy is able to break line of sight to avoid it though. Your little buddy has a total of 60 health and it's going to deal 30 to 80 damage depending on how close it is to the enemy when it detonates. The Boombot is an interesting piece of utility that can clear out whole areas similar to a drone without vision. So on offense or even on retake, the Boombot is a pretty crazy piece of utility. For example, the most standard clear with Boombot is Hookah here on Bind. This is going to let you know if there's anyone in Hookah allowing you to effectively clear it. This doesn't mean you should only be using your Boombot on lineups to clear things though. 
If you got a feeling an enemy is tucked into an angle, or there are enemies holding a crossfire, you can use your Boombot to confirm this suspicion. Your Boombot is also good for assisting your peaks or for letting you know when to use paint shells or showstopper. You can assist peaks by throwing it at an enemy pushing you. When it locks on, swing. This is going to force the enemy to choose between shooting you or the Boombot. It's quite a predicament and is pretty difficult for the enemy to deal with in a 1v1. Since you get information using the Boombot, you can combine this with a well-placed paint shell to hopefully flush the enemy out or even in-game them. Your Boombot is also pretty clever. He can even open the teleporters on bind. If you're playing short with rays, standard practice is throwing your buddy through TP to open door if the enemy is taking hookah. If your Boombot locks onto somebody, throw a nade through the TP to make the enemy's lives even harder. This will force them deeper into hookah or force them to fall off. This works best if your team has a pretty good setup inside of hookah. This alternatively can be done on the teleporters from B long to showers. The key here is get creative with the combo. The paint shells are amazing when combined with Boombot as they are an amazing set of damaging utility. The raised nade detonates once after two and a half seconds and drops four smaller nades. These paint shells can do a whopping 55 damage per shell or a maximum of 275 total damage to enemies. Not only are they great for damaging, they're great for flushing enemies into either peeking you or falling off. Paint shells will recharge after getting two kills, and yes, this includes two paint shell kills. So, how should these be used? Primarily, you'll see them used to stop a push. Throwing these at the choke while the enemies are pushing makes them choose between either pushing onto site or falling back into the choke. This generally results in a fragmented push that's easy to deal with or can shut a push down entirely. You can time this to try and determine the way the round will play out. If you want to frag the team, it's best to throw this after you notice a jet dashes out or you see one entering sight. If you want to stop a push entirely, it's best to throw it earlier or even throw it when the enemy is using informational utility to set up the push. Combining this with an Astra Suck, Fade Tether, or even Sage Slow can be a very lethal combination. The other applications include flushing and displacing of opponents, and flushing is honestly simple. If you have information an enemy is stuck in an area, flush them out using the nade. They'll either sit there and eat the nade, or they're going to be forced to make a panicked swing into your crosshair. This works very similar to a molly, and it's just a bit easier to land properly in tight angles. Since it explodes once before dropping extra shells, you can throw this in the air to make its area of effect even larger. The downside is it's much more reactable and spreads the damage more thin. Enemy displacement is similar to flushing though, and it forces the enemies off of angles they may be holding. Unlike a molly, this is fairly easy to land and cover a large area instead of just that corner area. This means you can throw it into the general area of enemies that may be holding angles and force them to back up while you advance. Paint shells, while simple at their core, are very effective for their intended purpose. Moving on to the star of the show, we have Raze's ultimate, the showstopper. Taking a total of 1.4 seconds to wind up and 10 seconds to expire, the rocket launcher can deal 30 to 150 damage depending on where it lands. Raze's ultimate covers a large area and can be used to instantly kill enemy players. This ability is best used to deny spike diffuse, stop pushes, entry onto site, or even get aggressive on defense. Easily one of the most versatile ultimates in the game, the showstopper completes its goal of ending rounds in a flashy explosion. Now, it's important that you don't aim this rocket directly at enemies, as it's going to usually go right past them aim it at a wall next to them, or even better, the ground where they stand. This is going to explode and create a radius on the ground and anyone close enough to it is going to lose instantly. It's a very simple ability and, once again, when it's combined with the rest of Race's utility, it gets a chance to shine in a different light. The Showstopper enables triple jumping and can be combined very effectively with blast packs or even the Boombot and paint shells. To triple jump with Raze's rocket, you're going to need to double satchel and pull out your showstopper just before you throw your second satchel. This will cancel the showstopper's pullout animation, replacing it with a blast pack animation. 
from here, shoot your ultimate, and this is going to effectively give you a third boost in the form of a pushback. This can be good for entering onto site and proceeding even further after shooting your ultimate ability. Now this is a very dangerous technique, but can be great if you have a team quick enough to get out with you. It's best to make sure you're triple jumping into cover, cause this is best performed after your team throws smokes and then flash out for you. Raze's kit is probably the most synergistic utility set in the entire game, and you have to use all of these abilities together if you want to maximize how well they work. That's why we watch Radiant players. It really helps us understand the utility from a more broad perspective and gives us a glimpse at what true Raze mastery looks like. Let's take a look. Our star of today's show will be Gray FPS, who pushes Raze to a new level each time he plays. Ooh. You Already up sight. Just good. Nice. Dead or dead, dead. coming down. Somebody I can go. I'll smoke it, I'll smoke it after it goes off. Respect bro. Enemy remaining. Huh? Go east, bro. Go, go. Starting off the round, we see him throw paint shells instantly to displace and fragment the enemy team. Jet dashes in, but nobody's there to help since they're waiting for the nade to expire. From here, info is gathered by Boombot that they're still short, so the opportunity is taken to push into the area silently where Boombot confirmed that there were no players. After the next kill is gained, he now has his paint shells back, which he instantly uses to push the enemies even further back as he advances. Killing the Sky and Gecko as they try to trade, Gray now knows that Brimstone most likely was displaced by the nade thrown market as he didn't peek to trade. He makes the decision to satchel down into the Brimstone's face to seal the ace in the flashiest way possible. In this clip, we see two instances of displacement, one to fragment the enemy's push and the next in order to advance and fragment the enemies even further. We then witness him using his speed to finish the ace. Well played on this round, Gray. The last player standing. Oh, Spike down A. One enemy remaining. Oh, shoot. In our next clip, we see Gray forcing his way into cover using his rocket and landing a kill in the process. Once he's blast packed onto site, he realizes there are three enemies spread out. After landing the first, his only real option here is to go into tree. He used his rocket to propel him into tree where Chamber was waiting. Upon getting the kill on Chamber, he pulls the pin on his paint shells and denies the enemy the angle they were just peeking from. From here, Gray knows that it's likely the enemy will swing from the left, so he holds the angle and lands the kill. It's impressive to see how thoroughly Gray thought his options through while mid-air and chose his safest option. This will always be crucial when playing Ray's and using her utility like this. Oh. No! Down. I got the... Oh, uh, no worries, guys. Our next round we'll look at, we can see him satcheling straight into the opponents with his ultimate at the ready. You can see his animation cancel off the first satchel, and off the second satchel, air strafes straight into B main. He notices the enemies are split, so he takes out the larger threat of the two. Take note how after shooting the rocket, he decides to not go straight towards the sky, so he strafes backwards slightly by holding S at the peak of his jump. This is very quick and smart decision making as it prevents him from ending his ult in front of the sky. By doing this, it allows Gray to recover from his ultimate and hold for the sky who then swings into him and loses the fight. He once again put himself into safety after taking this risky ultimate. And that's what a lot of race players are. High risk, high reward. It's important to be sure that if you decide to use Raze's utility in a risky manner though, that you cancel out as much of the risk as possible by analyzing options as you're playing the character. 
You don't need to double satchel in every time. Sometimes it's best to use your utility in safe manners that we talked about earlier. But just know, mastery of rays is understanding when to take risks for a big payoff and when to sit back and use your utility in a smart and efficient way. We hope with this video we've set you up with some tech you can effectively use to help you boost your rays play higher or even just learn rays for the first time. All right, though, guys, before we wrap this up, let's tell you a little bit more about skill cap. So we offer a five division rank up guarantee, and we think that's a pretty crazy thing to offer. It's kind of like a gym membership guaranteeing you that you're going to get ripped. Your local gym would probably go bust if they offered you that. But not us, because we've offered this for years because our service really does work. It works so well, in fact, that we're able to produce by far the largest catalog of premium Valorant guides on the Internet. We add new courses every month with over a thousand guides curated into over 50 courses. No one can compare. We also have a direct line of communication with subscribers in our Discord so that you can get connected immediately to some of the best players in the game who will respond to every question you ask. Sign up today for as little as $6.99 a month if you're serious about improving your game. So that's going to be all for this one today, everyone. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.